So the way to design the way to design um, a successful workshop is you've got to think like somebody who's designing a house. Think like an architect at the same time, think like a psychologist. So you're thinking about the um, mechanics of the workshop, you know, uh, do I have everything, all the resources are on site, uh, the position of the hall, the structuring, the sitting arrangement, where the table is, everything while you're thinking about that you're also at the same time your mind is thinking about the kind of people that are coming because we have already dealt with, we assuming you've already dealt with the fact that you know your trainer you are equipped to be a trainer okay so what are the kind of people you're going to train because at the end of the day we are looking to come back with success we are looking to come back with results we are looking to come back with having achieved the very objective we set out to achieve Okay. Julia, and, uh, and um, yes, Edna, how can this be a little you. bit interactive? I need to see a hand up, a thumbs up, something going, yeah. Okay, cool. Because this is a workshop, you know, you, do, you, don't run a, you don't run a workshop like you run a lecture. No, a workshop is supposed to be very interactive. Okay, don't just appear like somebody that went there with one someone and uh, once you're done sharing what was the Lord deposited on your heart, you're, you take an altar call, you pray for queen, you go back. No, a workshop is supposed to be very interactive because we are wanting, whether we have one hour, 30 minutes at a school, we are wanting to make them very impactful. Okay, so it has to be very interactive. So, um, I'm really trying to skim through. We shape our meetings and those meetings in turn, they shape us. Okay. As a trainer, the audience is looking at you as the leader, okay? Uh, the audience is looking at you as the leader and every leader produces after his followers. So as soon as you step up on the pulpit or on the stage, you've got to be very high energy. People are seated there expectant, okay? You are the one who knows your cause content but before you open your mouth the hearts of people looking at you have already decided whether they're going to listen to you or whether their hearts are going to close down okay so step there with uh, confidence believing in yourself step there with some warmth on your face excited about what you're carrying because people looking at you within the first six seconds have already formed an opinion as to whether they want to hear you or not all right uh, before I get into how the whole understanding and retention works, you know that uh, some of the some of the qualities that you need to have as a trainer you need to be authentic, you need to be original, okay? Um, you need to be very sincere. You will not get many results. You'll not hear testimonials from the work you're doing week in, week out if people listening to you don't get a sense of you being honest, vulnerable, authentic, because it's a workshop of real delivery, okay? So let them pick that sense of sincerity. Um, personally, I get very disturbed when people, you know, somebody stands and testifies like, oh, the Lord has been good to me. I just wanna say thank you. Please help me thank the Lord. Good about what? What are the details? Where were you before? Take our hearts and our minds through the motions of what you were going through in the waiting time, in the trying time before the Lord came through. Then I can perhaps believe that this same God that visited you can come through for me, you know? So you gotta be very authentic and sincere and caring, empathetic, empathic, uh, understanding. And then you have to be leader-like, take charge, and then uh, have a sense of humor. If you have to use cartoons, if you have to use a dance, if you have to watch some jokes before you come, if you have to copy any that dad has been saying over time, you know, uh, copy, but have a sense of humor. At least it helps the audience relax and uh, be curious and hungry and open up, okay? So that's done. How do you run a successful workshop? First, by you becoming the, the person that you want to go listen to. 
So if you don't have any experience before, if you haven't, if you don't have any significant or succeeded at anything at all, uh, don't go there feeling unworthy. No, just start. How do you start? The start of a delivery workshop should never be in front of people. Let it be, you talk to the chairs in your house, do like 31 sessions in front of the mirror, dance there, pray, talk, repeat the information to yourself, to anyone you care to meet in the house and your friends before you go. That helps you, gives you, gives you confidence with your content. Okay, you're able to know potential flaws, you're able to know what it is that you might miss out so that it's a systematic flow once you stand in front of people. Okay. Um, use. I'm just skimming through my notes quickly. Use questionnaires to arrive. So I hope you know the kind of audience that you're going to speak to, that you're going to train, that your the workshop has been set out for. That has got to be crisp clear because you can drive the same principle, but you need different examples to speak to a 12 year old than to speak to a 16 and a 19 year old, okay? You gotta be very clear. That means before you go for a workshop, run what we call a TNA, TNA training needs analysis. Send a blind questionnaire to the team that you're sending, maybe to the leadership, to the, uh, see you leaders to the people on the ground that you're going to train, looking to find certain aspects that your training should be geared to. It's more effective when you tailor make it from response responses given by people on the ground. So ensure every time, uh, even if you have an idea what it is they want, you'll be surprised how people answer questions. So blind questionnaires where there are no names given, um, names labeled on the papers, but when they come back to you, uh, you'll be able to deliver something more, you know, find out what are the challenges on the ground, what are the needs, what are the, what is the vision, what are people looking to grow into, you know, so that helps you tailor make a more suitable uh, training and you'll get more results that way than when you just go to the next one, the same way you went to the previous one, there is no assumption. Even if you're called to deliver for the 10th time, the same topic you've been delivering all your life in many other places, there is no assumption. For me, even if an eight-year-old or a 10-year-old is coming, I almost stay up the whole night. Yet it's something I've been doing continuously, one-on-one uh, -on -one trainings and continuous workshops. I've been doing that for 15 years, but every time it's, uh, it's new. I've been seated up all day since 8 a.m. at one spot. I just left a few minutes ago to step out maybe 30 minutes ago and I stepped back, but I haven't had a moment to think of anything else but this. And my friends have been telling me, but Lillian, you've been doing this all your life. I'm like, it's not the same. It's So don't get to a place of familiarity if you get into uh, the, the life of workshopping, okay? Uh, it has to be new, get fresh materials, sharpen yourself on the edge, uh, don't allow any assumptions because that's when you begin to miss out and take people for granted and you miss to be sensitive on the needs on the ground just because you assumed. Okay, so some of the techniques to deploy during the workshop running, you, you got to speak, you know, you're going to speak, you're going to use audio visuals. Uh, they just enrich the variety of, of your training, which sustains the attention more. If there is one thing as a trainer, um, as a person leading the workshop you want is the attention of people. So be, get a mastery into how to host attention. It is a lie that people only concentrate for two hours. It's a lie. It's down to you as the person leading the workshop to ensure you find means and ways to hold the attention of people. That's why Paul was speaking and guys were falling from whatever floor, second, third floor. They die, he says, mm -mm, not here. He comes down, with, resurrects the person up and keeps on talking like the whole day, the whole night. It's possible to get attention of people. Okay. Um, so do you have some music? If you don't have a praise and worship team there, if you don't have... Um, uh, somebody to lead for you, you, you've got to come up with a song. A trainer has got to be all things at any time. You become anything. If you go there and, and um, you needed to use, let's say a laptop and a projector and something messes, you know, it gets, it, it just 
doesn't work or there's a blackout, something happens, you know, to the material and resources and techniques, everything you're depending on, you're going to become that thing become the radio, become the microphone, become everything. You don't start coughing and whispering like, oh, 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 my voice. So as a person going to do workshops, start speaking aloud, start trusting your voices, start training yourself, okay? So have some um, uh, music and then in the workshops, you'll have to employ discussions, which I believe you've listed out at what point groups will be discussing before you step in. I realize I'm saying a lot at the same time because there's a lot to cover within a short session. Okay, so you've structured how the training will run long before you ever go for that training. So you know at what point you will divide people into groups because that uh, promotes a lot of, um, uh, you know, when people get to discuss one-on-one, -on -one, it opens them up more, it promotes the energy in the workshop that you really want, because once the energy goes low, um, you lose out. You lose out on the attention of people. They start going for their phones, they start walking out in the name of going to the bathroom and they stay there at the restaurants or whatever because your energy went low, okay? So find out before you go for the workshop, make sure the whole program, how it will run from beginning to the end is in your mind. And if you're going to go two or three people at one place, you got to be able to be at this, on the same page, speaking the same language at the same time. That should something happen to the other person, the next person will pick on just as if it was the other person. So you're not copying their personality. You're not losing out on who you are, but the content is the same. The mastery of how the whole workshop will run and the outcomes you're looking forward to get are the same on your mind. That reminds me, I'm having to run ahead of myself. Uh, that also reminds me, you pair up trainers to go for a certain workshop who have uh, the same, a good amount of chemistry within themselves, or people who met and prayed earlier and uh, had a cup of tea together, got to know each other as a person, person, because sometimes all we know each other is by the church. I've never known you before. You've never said hi to me. We've never sat anywhere, but boom, we meet at some group somewhere and we're supposed to deliver. Now, if me and you don't have some chemistry going, we're not excited, I don't know anything about you, it definitely spills over to the people that we're trying to deliver because we don't have a good flow going on. Not like there's anything wrong with you or me, but I just don't know you. I'm going to be extra careful, shut down a little bit because you're kind of a stranger to me. So uh, that again bothers me. You gotta start talking to people uh, and in church. You can't run a workshop if you're not interested in people because the workshop is not just technicalities and papers and uh, driving your point home and good content. No, 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 it's more, it's more about people. Do you love people? Do you understand people? So um, you, you, you give yourself that assignment to be genuinely interested in people, okay? And you'll know that when you go out there, you'll run a good workshop because you know how to break ice with just about anybody, okay? So don't be looking at each other strange kind of way in church there, the way I see it happening. There's some people I just stop like, hello, how are you? And they're greeting you with their eyes looking down. It really bothers me like, hi, how are you again? So I, thank God, we're not now shaking hands. So I don't know what we'll do anyway, but I, 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 someone is shaking your hand and they're looking the other way. I'm thinking, goodness me, are you interested in knowing who, who it is that you're greeting? So when you say, how are you? Is it a normal greeting, casual, traditional, or is it genuinely, I wanna know, I really am curious, I'm interested in knowing how are you? How are you? Okay, because if you wanna know how someone is, you'll be surprised. You can be saying, how are you the first time? And they just break down because they sense this person is interested in who I am and they've read right through my heart because of the issues I'm carrying right now. Somebody just breaks down because they don't easily meet a genuine person along the corridors. Okay. And then, uh, so that's part of the demonstration of you as a trainer and person going to run the workshop. So uh, I, audience participation is key. Learn to create stories that illustrate the principle. I'll get there in a short time. Allow me just to read on. Uh, it's the, because uh, illustrations and stories are the glue that helps people to remember. And sure, you use exercises. Anybody that's been with me in workshops, you know that at any one time when you just sense the energy is going down, there should be too many activities at any one time on your mind. Energizers, jokes, stretches, okay? 
they help the group bond more and promote energy, promote people relaxing and increase focus. Okay, so um, all, after every 30 minutes, always ask people, maybe 20 minutes or after discussing, what is it? A principle that you are driving home, always give it back to the audience to debrief. What did they hear? What are they saying? Um, how can they apply this in their normal lives? How has this been impactful? Let them give it back to you. So whether you understand whether they're flowing with you or you're on your own, okay? There's nothing like uh, running a full workshop and then by the time you ask for feedback, everybody's just looking back at you like, ah, what did you say? So we'll get to the very end, which is supposed to be question and answer as Edna has agreed. Okay. So uh, plan your session, plan your session in such a way that the audience leaves with maximum participation, okay? The amount of content to use depends on the need level or time you have available. Do you have one hour? Do you have 30 minutes? Okay, or do you have a full day? All right, so you plan your content, first of all, depending on the kind of audience you're going to have. That's why it's important to know that audience in advance, okay? Uh, and then the amount of time that you have. Um, what are you working towards? You gotta go there with very clear outcomes in your mind because clarity is power. Audience can sense people that are confused just trying to guess around the entire place, okay? So um, what are you working towards? Then give people feedback. So that means before you go for the workshop, you have some feedback forms. Always have feedback forms. You want to know the areas that impacted people. You want to know whether you did well. You want to know the areas of improvement, okay? You want to know your areas of improvement. So um, go with feedback forms all the time. Study that feedback afterwards because it will help you grow. Um, You've got to go there having understood the power of goal setting, okay? You have set some goals. Progressively, as you go by 30 minutes later, 20 minutes later, one hour later, do you feel you're achieving your goal? You've got to have a way of measuring yourself so that you're able to teach others also how to achieve their goals, okay? Gain content and delivery mastery. Take action. Um, I'm saving through this notes very first. I'm holding so many pages. Um, Have someone that will help you keep time as well. Uh, I've noticed people feel disrespected when you begin to go over time. So if you've gone there with somebody uh, to support you, let them be at the back while you're at the front and they can make a sign to tell you, okay, fine, it's break time or your time is up, all right? I see people bringing um, pieces of paper, yet that has a way of pulling away the what you had built up, it cuts the attention, okay? So guys majestically walk to the front with little bits of paper. There's a way it takes away energy that was flowing and the focus that was going on when you sincerely bring that nice piece of paper to say 10 minutes more, five minutes more, okay? Be at the back where your fellow trainer will see you, okay? To And, and make a sign with your finger or something to let them know five minutes or wrap up, you know, that kind of thing, which means you've already agreed on these things beforehand, okay? Um, where are we here? You go to a place and you realize people already know, know what it is that prepared. What is the next thing you do? You find that the need level is, is different. What do you do? So as an individual, I know the many number of programs I can deliver per age group. But now under Flyam, do you understand the variety of things and packages that Flyam offers different groups of people, this newly saved person, this one that has just gotten baptized, this one that needs to understand, let's say, assurance of salvation, this one that needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to be grounded in it, this one is facing this kind of challenge. When someone comes to you about home issues, do you have the variety of things you've been trained in, you've read the manual, you know, orientation manual of Flyam. Do you have the content? So always have uh, the variety of tools that are needed at your fingertips. That means this is going to be a long journey that's so continuous of uh, 
of understanding the material back to back at your hands, okay? If I take an adult manual that I'm supposed to run a program for two days, whether with a group or with an individual, I should be able to run it from beginning to the end without even referring to any pages or any book. That means you, you immerse yourself in the material because if you don't mean business about being a trainer to impart knowledge and make a difference on others, if you don't mean business to sacrifice your entire life to live for what you're preparing, you'll not impact others. And along the journey, you'll get tired, you'll, you, you'll give up, you'll find other alternatives, you're gonna get bored. So training is, it, it has to take your heart. It has to take your life. You have to be very clear the impact you're going to have in the lives of the people. And after a while, six months, one year later, you'll meet somebody out there who'll tell you, had it not been for you who told me this, had it not been for you who shared this, I don't know how I'd have made it through school. I was going through something. I was so discouraged. I was about to give up. But because you shared this, my grades even changed. And maybe you are not even sharing anything academically, but it came out of the overflow of your passion. You've got to be very um, intensely passionate about this journey. Okay. Um, effective message delivery is still going on. We'll get to these things of mastery of the Bible. See, all of you in Flyem are just like Paul. Mastery of the Bible is by reflection. But we'll get into the details of that later. Let me just share what it is I'd prepared. Preparation of menstruation, exposing the theme, time, consciousness, structure. <laughs> to go teachings from day one. Okay, how to handle question and answers, do's and don'ts. Cool, let's go on running a workshop. Get the needs. Um, get the needs of the group. I'm gonna repeat myself quite a little bit. Get the needs of the group you are, uh, you the, the group you're to minister to get their needs first. We say that's called what? TNA. So I like it when someone is posting and uh, are sending notes up. I see those and uh, they are really encouraging for me to know some people are hearing. Okay. Uh, how can you, with the same, same content and the same need, how can you make them anew, anew the with the next group that you're coming into? Maybe in the next group, half the group had you in the, in the previous delivery workshop. How can you, make the same content with a new fresh touch or fresh twist, okay? First of all, I, when, when I was learning literature at the university, we were told, if you're gonna share the same story a thousand times, make sure you say it differently a thousand times, the same, same story, which means the examples you add, the Royco, the spice in there, the sugar, the animation, the passion, every time tell the same story anew. That means you really have to recreate yourself as a person every single time. Those things come naturally when you're really passionate, by the way. You don't have to think much about it. So, right now, it may be sounding like, oh, how do I do that? No, the moment you really immerse yourself in something, they come out so passionately. They come out so new all the time. So do you have your tools? Make sure you go to the workshop there with your tools. What, do you understand the expectations of the group? What are the group's perceived needs? What are the challenges of the organization you're going into or the team or the individual? Okay, so let me go through some trainers attributes. Well, uh, your dressing should be well fitting. Um, I like to say wear some powerful colors that don't drive attention um, and will not get people again very excited or will not get certain people very stressed. That's why it's important to design your program like a psychologist as well, some colors affect a certain group of people a certain way. When you're going to form twos that are just boys, they don't respond the same way form fours boys respond, no. With form twos, wear something dull. I'm telling you for a fact, wear something dull and really long so that the focus is on what you're saying more than how the colors are making them rest without even them knowing that it's the colors the trainer is wearing that's affecting them. That's a whole topic for another day. So ensure that they are decent, your clothing is clean and appropriate and um, uh, 
if you have a friend, just tell them whether do these colors go together with the other one, you know, at least some little sense of matching will be good. Communication skills, okay, have some communication skills and listening skills. That's something on its own completely, okay? Listening is so deep. Uh, we'll share that on another time. We cannot do listening right now. It's, it's too wide. We think we are listening. No, we are not. You're probably just waiting for somebody to, to finish saying what they're saying, and then you can answer with the, the good ideas and uh, wonderful answers and spot on scriptures that occurred in your mind while the person was talking. You were not listening. Your mind was busy while the person was talking. So you denied them the presence and the attention to listen. And there's no way what you come up with can be the solution they need because you genuinely did not listen. You are detecting, you are judging, you are rushing, you are robbing them of the, of the attention they needed because you speeded them up and helped them finish their sentence so that they can get a sense of you listening, but you are not listening. The Holy Spirit partners with you at a deep level. When you're genuinely listening, you're able to know what's transpiring at a deep level in the life, in the world of the person that's talking to you, whether what they're saying is making sense or not, whether it's right, whether it sounds crazy. When you genuinely listen to try get a frame of the world this person is living in, something always drops in your spirit. Whether it's a question you'll ask, an answer you'll give, or an explanation you seek, I'm telling you the next thing you open your mouth to say will be the exact answer that person is needed. Yeah, sorry, that person needed. But you got to be a good listener to offer somebody else, you know, and training. The large part of the training is really listening. When I'm done doing workshops or one-on-one -on -one trainings, by evening, I am drained. I feel like I've been running the entire city. Why is that? Because listening is life-giving it takes everything in you at the same time if you finish a workshop or talking and uh, you don't feel that exhausted like things have been pulled out of you you're yet to start learning how to listen because listening pulls everything out of you it's so sacrificial it's so life-giving and that's the point at which the holy spirit partners with us to make a difference in the life of somebody else talking to us okay um so uh, some of the skills you need to have, you need to be very resilient. So whether you get the results you wanted, whether you experience some challenges along the way of uh, the workshop running or preparation, you, you gotta be very resilient. Be determined that you'll keep going. Nothing will discourage you because this journey of being a trainer will test everything in you to, to see, are you really convicted that you want to affect lives? Because you're becoming you're partnering with God to extend his voice, you know, like John the Baptist, his voice to others, okay? So you're gonna be tested in a lot of ways. One of the ways a trainer is tested in is the area of love. Do you love people? There are times I've not had the frame of mind, the presence of mind to do anything, but when I hear the case that's coming, I go like, okay, come, come bring that person. Um, there was a time I came from, not long ago, I came from the dentist, I had a, um, a procedure, surgery, okay, and they put some three stitches in my mouth because when they're extracting, our, it's, the, the tear was too large, and at that time, there's a desperate lady calling every few minutes, Leon, are you done? I keep telling her, you know, a procedure has gone wrong. I'm in so much pain. I'm not sure I can meet you. Please, please, you've got to be able to meet my daughter. You have to, you have to. Do you have a clue the pain I was in? It was mad pain. I had to come into town, waited and met with a girl because she had written a letter of suicide. Before that, she had run away from home and it's that morning they managed to get her back. So I'm here battling. Is it my pain or is it this person that has sort of put their faith in me that I can just have a five, 10 minute discussion with a daughter who will agree to go back to school and not to commit suicide and then agree to stay at home. I hope you see the challenges there. So you're tested, it's a long, long journey, but you get refined and God keeps encouraging you with some of the amazing results that come to follow you because you've given your life for this um, experience, okay? And then uh, you gotta have an outstanding personality. So grow your personality. That's why it's a topic for another day, okay?
uh, you gotta have an outstanding personality if you're going to um, to become a trainer. So um, start learning how to become warm and charming and excited because you just because you've woken up, you're excited. It's not how I'm feeling. It's not what my pocket has. It's not amount of work at my desk, how the boss is treating me, the lectures, how they are going, the domains in my department. It's none of that. You got to have this other level of excitement just because, because that's what you keep transferring to people. And it's not something you can just put on when you meet people. No, you train yourself, you train yourself, it starts growing in it, okay? So that you're infectious, you enter a room and you light it up. You enter a room and you light it up. That's what a trainer is, okay? And then presentation skills. Um, I sat somewhere where somebody who had claimed, I gave somebody a chance and they claimed to love kids so much. He was a teacher. So I assumed, okay, because he's a teacher, if I give him this session, he's gonna run it so well. So he prepared something to do with goal setting and focus and all that, my goodness, my goodness. I was so bored and I was sympathizing for the students that were listening to me because the tone was the same, monotone from the beginning to the very end. And he looked like himself is about to sleep. No variation of tone. Okay, so check your tonalities uh, when you're training. Okay, cool. And then um, have some culture. Okay, I've sat next to people who, oh my goodness, you can't keep chewing with your food. You'll go for break, you'll go for lunch. I can't keep hearing how your food sounds and tastes and all that and you're not closing your mouth. Training, you part of it. I posted online pictures of me eating lunch with people, whether it's young boys, you're standing there with them. Have some culture because they've got to learn from you in class and outside class. Okay. I pulled some girls on the side during lunchtime or they say, you can't walk like that. You're a girl. You can't walk like that. I mean, relax, be a little bit easy, have some swag on yourself. So it's, it's not this hard life and you're training, you're dragging your feet down, dust is flying all over the place. So you're teaching, you're training within that day, within that hour in class and outside class. I, I had not even prepared to say that. So let me stick to my notes. Um, Congruence, congruence between what you're saying and who you really are. People can pick whether there's a conflict, whether there's a conflict between what you're saying. Do you really believe, do you live the life of what you're saying or it's something you've just crammed for the sake of delivery, but it's not your life. It will not produce results. Everything reproduces after its own kind. So you've got to be congruent in what it is you're saying. If you're telling students, you know, um, live a holy life. Don't sleep around. That thing, they get to pick it in their hearts, whether are you really living this life or it's just something nice you're going to say. It doesn't produce results. It doesn't even touch the hearts of people with any impact, no matter how you change your tone and you make it whisper to sound how serious it is and how much God means business with this. If it's not the life you live, it will not produce any results. So training calls you, you yourself as a person to a high standard, first of all. Leadership is not so much about who's following you, but it's about holding yourself to a higher standard. Okay. Um, presentation skills still. Um, you got to have structure of activities. I hope I can meet your leaders sometime and just give them a whole list of some energizers and team building activities that you can throw in here and there, depending on the groups. Okay. Uh, structure of activities. Use a board. Uh, I'm coming to explain the different groups of people, you know, when you go for any session, just know there are three kinds of listeners. There are three kinds of, um, there's three kinds of audience. So you deliver, you deliver, you deliver your, your training according to the different audience seated watching you. Number one are visual people. I hadn't gotten there, but um, let's just flow with it. Visual people, they, they are impacted, they understand, and they remember more based on what they saw. They are very visual. So use a lot of visual boards, um, move around, facial expressions, gestures. Uh, you know, they're very visual. They will understand your message based on the, all the visuals around. If you have, they have to watch a short clip or if they have to use slides, 
but I don't like, I don't personally, I don't like using slides so much. I discovered that uh, when you go to the second and third slide, people have already forgotten what was on the first slide. So I'd like to train and, and deliver in a way that you can create slides in the minds and the hearts of the people. That's another journey together. Okay, uh, high energy already talked about that. Do, if you pick the session on a low level, one hour later, it will be hard to raise the energy of the team. Okay, so plug in at a very high energy level. Okay, bring on board an attitude of achievement. Not mumbling words, okay? So that's why it's important to have friends that can tell you the truth, give you real feedback before you go to the field to start delivering because we are representing God. We are representing uh, Fly M and now KCF has opened the door for us. So you are an ambassador wearing so many hearts. We can't afford to say, I'm not like that. Uh, that's not my personality. Me, I'm just quiet. My voice is not high. I don't like standing in front of people for long. I can't sing. No, no, no. There's no excuse when you become a trainer. I don't have a singing voice, but I can pull something and rally a thousand people along. So you trust yourself to be able to do that. Start somewhere, sing out in the shower, sing to everyone that cares to hear, create some tools within yourself that will help you deliver when you get to the field. Okay, so procedure for trainer, um, allocation of the trainers and duties. Do you have a leader? When you go in the field, you should be able to know who's calling the shots, okay? Um, anything with more than one head is a monster. So you gotta have somebody that's giving direction, okay? Um, confirm the program to be trained, confirm the number of participants and the demographics, how many uh, boys are there, how many girls, or how many males and females are there. It helps a lot in preparation. And then are there any manuals needed, okay? There are certain groups of people, especially some university students, you go there, they are so used to being presented for material in a certain way that if you don't have any manuals or papers or uh, some things written down, they don't take you seriously and part of their mind or heart shuts down. Okay, so find out the demographics and the attitudes and uh, the culture of the people you're going to train. Um, prepare the timetables if you need name tags. Uh, if you get a session with a group of teachers, you know, these are the little things that you're going to need. Uh, evaluation forms, registration forms, assess the training hall. So arrive there early enough <clears throat> so that you arrange it in a way that um, it will help you gain the most of what you want to achieve. Because if you just go in right on time and you accept any arrangement, oftentimes when I arrive at a school, I want, or a class, I want there to be a clear hallway from the front where I'm standing to the back so I can walk through and that helps you uh, spread energy for for class uh, class control you lose out on control you will not be able to get it and you'll not deliver and you'll not come back with results there'll be no testimonials and as you walk as a trainer make sure you can look at the people it's uh, John Maxwell that likes to say, even if there are a thousand people in their room, make sure everyone feels like they're the only ones in the room. So be the kind of person that can be able to walk around, around class at the back while looking straight in the eyes of almost each person. It helps students are not become naughty with whispering and grouping and throwing around things because they can see when they start being naughty whether that affects you. Okay, they can see, and if it affects you, they continue on and on. But if they know, all oh, right, I'm not messing around with this one. The person is friendly, but she means business. They will not do that. And I've seen, like I started earlier saying, I know some people, so fellow girls, fellow ladies, they can't look at you straight in the eye when you're talking. And you want to become a trainer? You're going to start exercising that level of confidence of looking at people straight in the eyes because you see a lot more in people's eyes and it's able to help you know even what to say that you're not even prepared, but it will, it will solve something that you meet along the journey. We prepare, but there are other things along the journey that you meet. And so you have to tailor make your delivery with what's transpiring in the hall as you walk around, as you look at the people, as you find somebody else at the back that's sleeping, maybe sick, maybe they are maybe they're on drugs, maybe they're unwell, maybe something is going on at home, whatever it is. Because anything small you don't have control over, it spreads like gangrene to the entire hall within a very short time. Okay. So 
have that in mind and then um, use a checklist. Can people start having at least, uh, what is it, a first aid kit when you go out there? There was a time I saw uh, one of the missioners, she got cut so bad on the leg and there was no spirit or cotton wool in sight. I really sympathized. It was horrible. So as we get started, don't go training because anything can happen. As people do energizers, as they get excited, as they run around, anything can happen. Basic painkillers in the box and uh, uh, what is it, elastoplast and uh, little things around here. Please let's learn to carry those. As a trainer, you need that as part of your toolbox, okay? Uh, organize the transport early uh, and then depart for training. Do you have microphones? Do you need to use uh, any equipment, chargers? Do you have enough airtime, okay, to call whichever teacher on the compound when you arrive? Don't, don't get there and start wondering, uh, why didn't we have this, okay? Ensure the equipment is working. Uh, have some rules also of how to handle negligence. If someone drops a very expensive camera, what do we do? What do we do? You went there with church equipment. What do we do? Okay. We are getting professional. So I hope the leaders are going to list something in the structures and in the manuals of what do we do in the effect of, of, of negligence? Um, Factors to consider when accessing a training hall, accessibility away from noise, moderate light, moderate light to facilitate use of PowerPoint. So not so much light and not darkness, completely not dimness. Uh, is there a power source near you or do you need one? Is the door at the back distance to convenience rooms? You know what convenience rooms are, right? Powder rooms, hello. And then uh, is there an echo? Um, is there enough ventilation? Okay, because if there isn't, people start dozing off. Okay, or it's just going to get congested. Um, are the seats mobile or are they benches? Trainers to be close to each other for better coordination. Okay, don't be very far away. Sometimes you need even just a glass of water. You've been talking for so long, but your trainer has gone to speak, your fellow, you know, your colleague has gone to speak on phone to somebody else out there. You wait and wait, you talk, your throat is drying up, you need some help to pull something from somewhere, but the person you went with is busy maybe chatting out there on phone or with other people. So the coordination between you and the person you went for training with is very important. I don't encourage, I don't encourage anybody going for administration alone because uh, you could eat something that could go horribly wrong with you in your stomach or whatever, anything can happen. Okay, and then uh, in the actual training, who's giving the opening remarks? Who's giving the opening remarks? My goodness, it's already nine. Um, it's always good because the opening remarks will help. You know, you give the background of where, who you are, where you come from, what's flying all about. Do you know the vision share? share what your expectations are. Um, let the people know, you know, the length of time that you expect to be there. And then um, always give a, a brief background of the outfit or entity you're representing. The leader introduces the team. So if we have the leader there, it's not the time to look humble by sitting back and letting other people do the topic, no do the introduction, go in there and let the people you are leading feel invited, feel encouraged by you introducing them and uh, saying something wonderful, encouraging because it helps the people listening open their hearts more towards those that will come at a later stage to, different, to, to, to present different sections because of how you introduce them at the beginning, okay? Uh, understand the thought process, okay? Necessary for you to get the results you want. Before you go for that training, you need to understand the thought process that is necessary for you to get what you want. Okay, so think alone or think with a team. 
the same way you think when you're building a house, we'll put these dimensions, we'll put this height here when this happens. So you brainstorm, either you're doing that alone or you're doing that with the team, brainstorm through every detail before the workshop gets started. So five things you need to succeed in any workshop, to succeed in any workshop you'll ever have to handle. Be clear of the outcomes, spell out the expected results, you want that you want to work towards in, in black and white because I said earlier clarity is power. Then what know you know the purpose, know your purpose in that training. Why are you running that training? Why are you running that workshop? Why? If those reasons are not clear here, there will be no results. There'll be no testimonials. Results sell for themselves. One person that gets transformed because they encountered you. They light up the experience to the entire school, to their homes, to any place they'll ever go to. A personal experience I gain in a workshop is unforgettable, okay? That is because the trainer was very clear of the why. Why are you running that workshop? For what reason? This is what will produce momentum. It will give you drive and then consistency to stay the long haul in the whole journey of being a trainer it will help you stay on because you 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 know why you're doing what you're doing way back in 2005 2006 i started trainings for the youth about three five years three four years ago i've met a couple of the trainers that we started youth trainings with and, and they're no longer doing it at, at all they stopped maybe they only did it for one or two years so what are you doing right now they're in totally something else something very different and the reason being ah when they started they didn't know why they wanted to do the training so they're not in it it can it, it can be sustainable because you don't know why you stay on and the results sell for themselves because you have clear clarity of purpose and then take massive action when you go to any workshop do what you've never done to get what you've never gotten okay massive action then the next thing is notice the difference so here you go to run the second the third the fourth workshop are you just doing the same thing without noticing whether the same thing we did last week and the other week, is it working or it's not working? Is it producing results or it's not producing results? You know, don't be a slave to traditions. Oh, this is how things have always been done. Mm -mm. Be flexible enough to shift it at any one time. If you notice, okay, fine. We agreed this, we needed to do this, we needed to go this direction, but I don't see it producing the results that we are looking forward to get. I don't see it aligning to the outcomes that we're expecting. I don't see it aligning to the objectives that we set out to achieve. So be very flexible. And so notice the difference. We, we like to call that, that's the mark of a genius, okay? Noticing the difference is the mark of a genius so that you're not doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results, which is what we describe in the world of trainings as insanity. Insanity doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. No geniuses are masters at noticing the difference. Okay, then uh, get good coaching. Anything you want to go to be really good at and to produce and to, you know, to become good at, you're not the first person. Mm -mm. There are other people that have gone ahead of you. If you listen to them, whether it's through YouTube clips or you make appointments with them or you attend their sessions, whether, you know, whatever you do, you are not pursuing that goal as, as an isolated entity. Something has already been done in that area. It's you to find out what more can I learn so that I shorten my journey towards my success and I don't make the same repetitive mistakes that others could have made. I don't fall in the same ditches that others did. Don't just go into something blindly, okay? Read widely, get good coaching in any area that you wanna go into, okay? So you wanna go teach about prayer. How much time do you spend praying? How many scriptures do you understand in your life you leave them you leave those scriptures you know them and you leave them those scriptures about praying then how much content also have you read about praying okay so much as you 
you learn prayer in praying, you're going to be able to break it down also in ways people will be able to understand it. So there's the overflow from your life because you live it. It's your lifestyle. It's easy to impact people. At the same time, you understand how to help people master um, knowledge about prayer and the experience about prayer. And when they begin to follow the ABC you left them with in that workshop, they begin to follow you with results. They begin to send you messages because you have taught them the ABC. I like to say a lot of people say you need to have a good attitude, but who is teaching people step by step how to have a good attitude? It's very easy to notice somebody who doesn't have a great attitude, but who is teaching them the little ABC without assumption, the step by step on how to have that great attitude, how to master lessons in class and produce better results, how to gain confidence, how to overcome limiting challenges that have held you back all these years. How do you teach somebody? And so when you go out there as a trainer, there's no assumption. Don't assume people know, don't assume this person, the way they look, the way they sound, they must know it all. No, there's no assumption in training. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Be very basic. The way you teach a two-year-old Trust me, that's the same way you can teach even a form four for them to get it. Use the same story of a rabbit and the monkey, whether you're creating it on the spur of the moment or it's something you read 20 years ago. Uh, that monkey story, when you want to drive a different, a different um, principle, give the monkey another attribute. You want to drive a different principle, use the same story, but now give the rabbit another attribute. You know, if last time the monkey hid the bananas, next time let the monkey be the one delivering something else. Even if you're training directors of World Bank, I'm telling you what they understand best is use of those stories. So as a trainer, you must have a thousand and one stories at any time at your fingertips. A thousand and one is an exaggeration, but that's one of the qualities of a trainer. Okay. And um, if you can't remember what you read, create something, create. They will just laugh along and that as they laugh there, it's retaining the information of what you're sharing. Okay, and then um, structural ingredients. Um, cover all the ingredients. What do you need? What are the ingredients you need uh, to deliver a great workshop? It helps you stay on track and cover all the ingredients. Sorry, this is gonna make sense. I'm reading for myself a little bit. The key ingredients you need that uh, make it clear, engaging and memorable for those attending. Okay, here we are. So after you figured out the demographics, okay, start engaging, engaging the audience. What is your central purpose? Set the tone for the day. Your why, what is your why? How did you become so passionate? I'll explain this. So you begin engaging by telling a funny story. You're introducing. Use a funny story, watch a small clip, watch a video, share a testimony. That's how to start. And we're here to know how to run the workshop. So how do you start? Start by sharing either a funny story or they watch a nice clip. I know we've set the atmosphere with praise and prayer and worship. You're running a workshop. Introduce with something that will engage everyone, that will pull people's attention. I, I, I watched a certain someone some years ago, but I've never forgotten how that pastor introduced, okay? He said, look here, Satan never brought sin in the world. Sin was introduced in the world by man. Sin came to the world by man. Yep, that's why you're looking at me the way you're looking at me. I was like, did, you know, just at that point, didn't he have already the attention of people, everybody wondering, okay, where is this going? How are you going to prove yourself? So you strike with the principle or you start off by uh, throwing people a little bit off guard, but that's what will keep them uh, glued and focused on you to know how you'll clear up the questions you've created in their mind at the introduction level. So there are many things to do when you're starting to hold the attention of people. If you start on a low, you lose out on people, okay? And then um, next, do a little bit of an energizer. People are coming so steep, you know, bored, maybe overwhelmed with homework and the baggage of life and all that. Always start off with a little bit of an energizer. Everybody stand, show me your right hand. 
uh, shake and all that, turn to the left, tell your neighbor this and that. No, but I don't like that monotonous, tell your neighbor, create something. I don't do that much, tell your neighbor. I, I, I don't know, it's a bit monotonous. There are many ways to engage, okay? Anyways, um, did I say too much? So walk around the room as you demonstrate something. It's easy to have the attention as you start by you demonstrating something. Tell people to jog on the spot, to repeat a stretch after you. Um, just engage people as you start the conference. Then remember, depending on the amount of time you have, there is the good to know and the need to know. There's that which you must achieve when you're leaving the workshop. So that which is good to know is like too much if you have four hours you can explain one point with many stories and over explain yourself and use research and all that but if you went for two hours and they finally just given you 30 minutes then you've got to constrict your training down to or your delivery down to what is only needful needful for them to know so as a trainer you always have to have too much at any one time on on any topic too much overflow with information okay um if the next speaker doesn't come and you're told fine you continue you continue don't go like i don't have more material no you went there with the good to know you also went there ready to deliver what is only needful to be known okay so that the timing whether it's stretched or limited doesn't throw you off that you still come back having delivered you can't be a trainer when you're not ready to smile you can be a trainer, you know, ready to just smile. Start with a warm smile. Let people relax by just looking at the smile on your face, okay? Whether you have mwanya from here to the entire place, please just smile. It's none of the mwanya. It's, it's none of um, the kind of makeup you have. Spread warmth, okay? Um, and then, how many icebreakers do you know as a trainer? How many icebreakers do you have at your fingertips? A critical session aimed at getting participants to relax and acclimatize to the training is icebreakers. Make sure participants feel significant and understand their need of the training. Go through a few icebreakers. Um, make sure they're comfortable with the person they're seated next to or you are at liberty to change. F come up with something. Okay, number one, two, three, move this way. Number one, two, three, move this way. Ensure that uh, there's no tension in the room. Everybody is comfortable with the person they're sitting next to so it's you to pick up that immediately you walk into a session okay they will never tell you that they are not comfortable with their neighbor and if they are they have they have they are, they are tense with the person they're sitting next to it will affect you know absorption of the material you went to deliver there and then uh, you set clear objectives give a summary of the main areas of the program create ways of forming groups spell out what break time and lunch time will be respect the participants and uh, get their permission if you need to extend anything always demonstrate what you're asking them to do before you you have them to do it always demonstrate always demonstrate what you want the participants to do before you have them do it tell them how you would answer a question you ask a question and you see they are lost a little bit show the example of how you would answer a certain question there's a confidence it gives them okay uh how you'd answer a certain question before you labor that expectation upon them let them know that you have also gone there to learn from them when they feel you're not holding yourself at such a high place that you're able to come down at their level then that's how they feel connected their hearts open to you okay if someone's heart is is not open to you uh, you'll struggle you'll struggle the atmosphere will not be free are even for the moving of the Holy Spirit. So we need wisdom, we need a spirit of excellence, we need skills, we need knowledge on how to handle people and how to deliver information, okay? And then, um, take time. Uh, take time to deliver what they, what they came, sorry, take time to deliver what they came for if possible. Let them know that each person in the room takes 100% responsibility for how their lives become after this information. After what you've shared, it's not about you to keep following up. Let them know that they are mature and responsible enough to improve the quality of their lives as individuals by virtue of what you're, you're sharing with them. And then go ahead and drive your... No, no, I'm skipping something here. 
when you introduce a concept, when you introduce a concept, you need to create credibility. Um, so you say something. What credibility do you have behind the concept you're introducing? Do you have a personal testimony? Do you know of some research? Do you have another person's testimony? You know, you can share, but people seated need to believe you so that they open their hearts towards you to absorb anything else that you're saying. So when you introduce a concept, use uh, as much strategies as possible to increase validity and credibility of what you're saying, okay? get people to believe you've used the statistics according to this research of covid in this country this and this happened therefore this is the direction we are taking and all that they need to be to believe in you and believe in what you're saying if what you're carrying and yet to deliver is going to make any sense okay then go ahead and drive your message home with a story to validate uh, your teaching Stories are always a great way to engage and help them retain the concept, okay? And then deliver it in a way to appeal all kind of learners, but people, sorry, put people in groups, give them opportunities to present and ask questions, um, encourage, in, encourage input and listen to what they're saying without interjection. There are a lot of people that don't encourage input. They are scared of questions. They are scared of looking like they did not understand or they did not master their content so they're wondering if someone asks a question that i was not prepared for how will i answer you answer the way you understand it or while you're still thinking about the answer throw it back in the room you know anyone else has an idea about this how else would you answer this how would you handle this and while you're buying time figuring out the question validate the person that asked the question uh, that asked that question Hmm, that's a very powerful question. That's amazing. That's so insightful. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for that. Your buying time, your mind is working over time, thinking about the best answer for this person. And if you don't have it, it's okay. Throw it back to the audience. And it's also okay. Tell them, you give me a few minutes after break time, let me come back to you. Okay, there's nothing wrong with looking like you don't have, we didn't go there as Messiah carrying answers to everything that everybody's wondering about. Okay, and then um, deliver in a way that will appeal all the learners, learn to maintain high energy in delivery, maximum focus retention, then get them to commit. Never leave, never leave a training session without getting people or whether you have 20 minutes, one hour, never leave people without getting them to commit to taking actions in line with the information they've just received. What are you going to do from today? How is this going to affect you? What changes do you commit to making by virtue of today's training? Write them down, write them down for yourself. Well, if you have time, you can check, but you don't have to. Uh, lest they feel like you're invading too much of their privacy. Sometimes your ability to check what they are doing depends on the rapport that you've created between you and the poor training, lest they feel like you're invading too much. But never leave without them getting them to commit to taking certain actions. They write down the action, let them write down maybe an accountability partner they are going to call or they are going to to ensure they work in partnership with this person who will hold their hands towards achieving a new level of action, a new quality of life based on the information that you have just taught them or delivered. Very powerful. Nothing in life happens until people take action. Okay, what makes a difference is action. So get your people that you're training to commit to the actions they're going to take and the changes they're going to make because of the train that you just delivered. Then always, again, wrap up with a powerful story, wrap up with a powerful song. One of the songs I like is, uh, I will never be the same again. You know, it makes people reflect more as they are singing, reflect on the content you've just told them. And now they're committing to themselves at a higher level that I will never be the same again. I'm a leader. I'm a changed person. I'm not the same person I used to be. I commit myself to new ideals. My mind is renewed. I'm no longer, you know, the mediocre person, the names they ever call me. I'm no longer the old results I was producing. Today's a new day because of what I received. Wrap up with a powerful story, okay, or a song. Um, What's the time now? Oh, that's fine. 
where are we now more strategies memory strategies so we are mostly working with students right and some of them are there they are stressed so much about schoolwork you really want to connect with the very reason they were taken to school which is uh, produce excellent results in their personal lives today and in future okay because the moment you deliver in line with the hopes that people are carrying then you've got them exactly where you need to get them okay tailor make your delivery in line with the hopes that people are carrying i really want to succeed i don't want to become a loser how can i avoid being in trouble how can i be a better person how can i uh, overcome while all that is going on connect the reason that took them to that place okay so um help them with things about memory okay i have a couple of things here i just don't know whether to read them through or it's fine so there are a few different memory strategies if you're going to help people whether it's to remember memorize scripture or uh, best way to revise their own notes okay i just thought to put in this because a trainer needs to have this what are you training if you're not going to help people in memorizing what you trained in remembering what you trained okay because it's as much as they can remember that they are able to apply every day of their lives all right so there are a few different memory strategies you can use to help improve their memory or your own memory okay um i've found myself at a time when atm number i've forgotten or the phone pin i've forgotten so uh we need this information but this information evaporates the time we really need it so how do you help people also remember what it is you're training and the other things they need to remember in life okay rehearsal 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 which amounts to repetition 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 never get tired of repeating if you're going to be a trainer you also have to have the skill of a teacher one um quality that makes teachers stand out is they are not tired genuine teachers are not tired of repeating the same information 20 30 100 times somebody doesn't get it you come back at, and then come back around it in another way say it another way the goal is for the person to get it not for you to get frustrated that these people are not getting it these people are not interested i don't think their mind is at the level they can grasp no no no, no. that's why you're a trainer find another strategy find another way and go at it again until they get it so that tests on your patience levels you gotta say the problem is not with this person let me find another way of explaining this again they have to get this okay that means before you go they have already prayed for their mind paul always did that you know prayed for uh, the understanding of people that they'll be able to grasp what it is the realities is going to deliver pray for the understanding of people that you're going to train okay um and then so repeating is a very powerful thing and tell people to be comfortable enough with repeating their notes and you as a trainer learn to go over the same information over and over again because the first time you said something maybe somebody was absent-minded and then they begin to conceptualize before it really settles you will have to have repeated the same thing about three times okay and then um use the production effect what is the production effect the production effect is basically hearing yourself read words aloud rather than silently and you will be more likely to remember them so encourage people to read words aloud even before you go for that training you've read out the structure the the beginning to the end of your training you've read it out aloud to yourself so that uh, you're comfortable with how you sound okay if you're insecure with how you sound what makes you think other people are going to be comfortable with how you sound okay I like to say, I love to hear my own voice. I love to hear my voice. Okay. 
you got to practice and be comfortable with how you sound. You sound different. Never go out there comparing yourself with somebody else. I don't sound like this person. No, that will only serve to drain your energy and give you low self-esteem, drain your confidence, and it will affect your delivery and you'll have no results. Okay. So the production effect, learn to be comfortable with how it is that you sound. Then the generation effect. What's the generation effect? The generation effect is a method where you come up with similar words or concept to the word or concept you wish to remember. I'll say that again. The generation effect is a, is a method where you come up with similar words or concept to the word or concept you wish to remember. If you wanna remember the word fish, Okay, you want to remember maybe a sentence, one sentence starts with the word F, the next one starts with the word I, and the next one starts with the word S, and the next one H, uh, sorry, H. You just make up the word fish, it will help you remember easily. That's a combination of the generation, the generation effect and also mnemonics. You remember how we used to cram um, colors of the rainbow? Okay, we also call that mnemonic strategies, okay? You have so much to deliver in a short time. How are you going to carry it here? Because as a trainer, you don't want to be seen depending so much on the paper. You don't want to be seen carrying the paper so much. Every time you're reading, you're reading. Guys will wonder, um, are you ready for this? Okay. Are you the right person for this? And the people that you're delivering to have seen all kinds of people. They've seen the good. They've seen the bad. They've seen the ugly. So don't go there to kill their confidence and their energy levels, no. So you've got to go there ready. And when you have so much content to deliver, okay, in the morning, in the afternoon, you're running a whole weekend workshop from Friday night to Sunday night. One of the things that will help you remember content in that structure is what? The generation effect or the mnemonics, okay, strategy. And then uh, there's the testing effect. The testing effect is a method of testing yourself on what you learned by testing yourself more as you study it, you recall it, you, rec you recall it or because recollection improves over time. So test yourself over and over. Never assume that new information you came across will be automatic at your fingertips to go deliver when you get there. There's nothing as bad as leaving the stage, asking yourself, why didn't I give this? How, how could I forget this? And you know, that was the the crux of the matter, the crux of the training that would have made a big difference in the life of the person. But you forgot because you became too busy, okay? You didn't, you didn't test yourself before going to deliver. When you've tested yourself, you're able to encourage others that you're teaching to keep testing themselves. They finish a comprehension passage, let them test themselves with the questions at the back. That by testing themselves over and over, they'll find their performance gradually improving because of that effect. And when the final exam comes, they are not scared because they have lived the lifestyle of testing themselves. So this is just yet another test, okay? When you make the lives of the students easy in the main reason that took them to school, any other material you're carrying, any other information you're carrying, you know, about uh, helping them change certain behaviors on how to be stable in, the, in their, in their faith walk in God, they receive it so easily because you're giving them so much peace in the area that, that has made them most anxious. Okay. And then uh, the narrative elaboration, we have the narrative elaboration. Narrative elaboration is a method of creating a story based around objects or circumstances that you are to remember. Okay. Then we have the memory palace. The memory palace is a method which combines uh, special memory objects. I think I'll skip here, but I'm gonna say immediately, I should send uh, both Edna and Julian notes so that uh, in your meetings, you can refer to this and they, it can also be posted on your pages for revision, okay? Um, you need to learn let me tell you, people remember things more visually. So if you want to remember a whole passage, how do I explain this? Put it as if, put it in ways and images that will help people remember. 
create a movement and a story as you walk from your room to the kitchen, to the gate, and then to the uh, place where you went to take maybe Matatu, and then the next place. But along every stopping point, you're putting important concepts that somebody will keep remembering. Oh, when I get to the door, I need to remember this. When I get to the gate, it was this. When I get to a place where people are, are laughing or they're clapping hands or a chat, I remember this. There's a way you can summarize an entire book in just amazing stories with images, but that's something for another time. As we train trainers, it's a long journey. Always maintain your, 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 your faith in the people. In everything you say, let the people listening to you know that you believe in them, okay? It's very easy. Let me tell you, I really got shocked the first time I had a child is moving from number 50 to number two. Then a kid moves from number 70 to number two. Then what blew my mind is when I got a testimonial, a certain boy had moved from, after a one day session, number 300, number 300 to number two. Then I realized what we really need to do is express faith in lives of people that have given up in themselves, you meet someone, all they need is just that hope again, that ember, let that thing light up the candle, you know, let your candle light their candle up, okay? So in everything you do, no matter how much you feel tested by the people you're training, whether you feel they're not getting it or expressing opposite behaviors, whether they are yelling around, being unruly, do not stop expressing faith in your voice, in your words towards the people that you're talking to, okay? Uh, I went somewhere sometime and the person I was with, when they took to the platform, started talking to the students and started telling them, the first words were, you must do this, you must do this. So hey, 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 I understand you're very passionate about that. I understand you're here to represent the kingdom and represent God's standard, but you're talking to people who are, whose standards are way off. Unless they feel you can pull them along with you, you understand where they are, you, they don't feel like you're judging them where they are, they are not about to move along with you. So you don't start from here, you must, you must. Must is words used by people that are very close to you. Very close to you because they know you're not forcing me. I know you, have, you love me. I know you've invested your life in me. So if you come and tell me I must, it's because we have a relationship. We are coming from somewhere, but it doesn't matter who you are. Why are you telling me I must based on word? So ease in slowly, ease in slowly. I know you're passionate about this. I know that the, the, the devil has really annoyed you on how he's ravaging the lives of students, but hey, the zeal on one side and then knowledge, you know, zeal without knowledge is not, knowledge without, um, zeal without knowledge is not good, okay? So knowledge on how to ease in and connect with your, with your people, okay? So maintain, the, maintain expectations by expressing your faith in the participant's ability. Always let them know, even if you don't use the words, I believe in you, there's a way you'll talk to them. There's a way you'll handle any questions or the challenges that are coming up in the training that will spell the words, I believe in you. Somebody doesn't have to tell you, I love you for you to know I, you, that you are loved by them. No, there's a way they respond to you. They listen to you. They handle you. That will make them know that you really love them. Okay. Um, if you have a small group you're going to, it's not so of students, especially, you know, primary or from ones, from twos, and it's not such a large group. You can carry some sweets. Sweets always do a magic People don't realize that that sweet feeling in the mouth produces a feel good emotion in the brain that makes the person relax and open up with things that are not even ready to open up because they're like, hmm, this feels good. So it doesn't become really hard to say anything that you have not even told somebody before. Sweets are magical. That's why I keep visiting the dentist. Anyways, um, and then, I hope you've seen them even in adults conferences. They are always little sweets, uh, KSL sweets or uh, tropical or uh, eclairs at the table. I hope you've seen that. 
So carry something, even if you don't have sweets for everybody, if you carry just 20 of them and throw at anyone that answers a question, anyone that answers a question, it encourages everybody to start participating. If there's one thing a trainer is looking for in any workshop is participation. Whatever it takes, throw a sweet here, throw a hundred bob here, throw a 50 bob here, it's okay. I talk back in a fair too exactly, Rudy. It's okay. What you've done will help you achieve the results you set out more than holding back on that 50 bob. I don't know a place I've gone to train that I didn't give a 50 bob, a hundred bob, and not because I had all the time, no. But it does a lot. I have seen about three people in the last four, five years post online on Facebook. Lillian, you remember you came to my school this year? I'm telling you that 100 bob you gave me was just, you were my angel that year. You did this for me. You have no idea what that 50 bob did. You have no idea. I also got a testimonial from Capsa Bed High of a, a boy that did so well because of 100 bob he got. I was like, my goodness, 100 bob. It's a teacher that was calling me, telling me that. And then she wrote it on an SMS. And then later on, the boy wrote it on my Facebook page, 100 bob. just to get somebody or to reward somebody that answered a question. Not because the question was so hard, but they were the first ones to answer. So you really wanna promote a lot of um, participation in the hall, okay, in the workshop. Um, do a lot of asking more than telling, get them to think and think and think, okay? What they remember more is, uh, is the, the answers they figured out for themselves more than the telling you did. When you start out, it's very easy to operate on a level of fear. Will I sound like I don't know what I'm saying? You know, but no, what people remember more, what remains more in the hearts of people is, could you not watch with me for one hour? Who do men say that I am? Okay. Questions, questions, questions. And falls more, enhances more retention, helps people reflect more on what it is that you said, more than a lot of explanations that you gave. Okay. And then um, more of asking. And then after the recap, let the recap, when you summarize your sessions, let them be more participatory, get from a lot of people as much as possible. What did you get in that session? What did you get? Anything you understand, anything you remember from this session and make sure everybody that contributes is feeling celebrated. You know, in class normally when students are there, uh, they really don't clap for each other. So when you go there with a different approach where somebody feels like, wow, um, you're actually validating that there's sense in my mind. You're encouraging me to stand up. You're encouraging me to, they feel confident. And by the time you, you got there with people's confidence being at two out of 10, when you leave someone is at 10 out of 10 or eight out of 10 and they transfer it in class and it goes into their prayer life and it goes into personal discipline and they start to believe in themselves more just because you did something small like what? Wrapping up by encouraging them to participate. What do you remember? Wow. Amazing, that was just something small I said. I didn't think anyone could remember that. I'm excited at that. Thank you for that. And then something I forgot to say when I was studying, please let people introduce themselves, okay? And try as much as possible to hold at least 10 names, at least 10 names. The sweetest sound to anyone's ears is their own name their own name. So don't go there like, yes, brother, uh -huh, sister there, brother, Nani, tell me, yes, sister, no, brother, sister gets monotonous. All right, call people by name. So it's your duty to try and remember as many names as possible. And when you don't remember, ask them to say it again. When you pick up somebody to answer a question, ask them to say it again. Somebody lives there with some sort of ego massage. They, even if you gave break time to be 20 minutes, they come back after five minutes, they're, they're already back. They can't wait for the next session to continue because you encourage them, okay? And then, um, sorry, do I have, I have, I think 13 minutes. Uh, I already said this always finished with clearly set out action steps with accountability partners and timelines. By when, by when, by when do you hope to have achieved this? By when, because that produces a sense of urgency in the lives of those that are committing to certain actions based on the training that you delivered, okay? 
let them put timelines on when they want they hope to have achieved certain things then um uh make little incremental steps Let them measure themselves by making little incremental steps and learn to celebrate every step that they take. Encourage them to celebrate themselves, okay? And then um, I hope I hope this session is making people feel excited. Like, yes, we are in the right place. We are ready to become uh, to work on ourselves and become great learners, uh, great trainers, okay? So um, common mistakes. I'm wanting to skip this. I'll send this as notes, common mistakes that people make. I hope you realize that we will be called for workshops, but many of them may be online. Many of the workshops we are going to be called for, a lot of things have changed worldwide. Things have shifted, okay? So a lot of the workshops are being run online. I watched a certain coach conduct uh, a training and team building session. He was alone in the studio with enough screens all over the place and different screens in different countries. They were, I, I think the, he must have had 2,000 people, 2,000 people participating at any one time from different countries. So something small is starting, yes, in flying, but be expectant of running these things in many schools at the same time. Look at this happening as a huge weekend workshop in about 10 schools or 20 schools following um, FlyM trainers workshop. You know, you, you come together, you're about seven of you, and you're going to run this great workshop in 10 schools at the same time, online, online. And you have to be energetic and you have to, to have the structured workshop. What are you going to do? So conducting a, a successful online workshop, let me just go through that very quickly, okay? I didn't want to belabor the whole thing about training must have a, a, an introduction, a body, and then a summary. No, that's a bit basic and it's in the notes that I'm going to send right away, okay? So, Physical workshops are currently not so much advised, not so much encouraged. Everybody's still, you know, very apprehensive about the variants that are coming up. Uh, but it doesn't have to change. It doesn't have to change the course for which um, FlyM was formed, okay, and the entity and the reason why we exist. It doesn't have to stop the purpose for which we exist, okay. It can only go higher. God is not short of strategies. So let us equip ourselves. Let us uh, put ourselves in position. Let us gain the necessary skills so that uh, when we put our hands on the plow, we are not looking back, okay? Jesus is coming looking for fruit on that tree. Shall we be ready, okay? So uh, plan your workshop. This is online, online workshop that I'm dealing with right now. Decide on a topic and prepare fresh insights to get there discourse going uh it would help if you research first so you you have a lot of information to share okay and then number two schedule your event so you send out the calendar early enough two weeks early uh to the people that you're going to train online send out the calendar so that they are ready they leave for the moment they save the hour and the day so schedule your your event figure out the activities for their event along with resources you might need, schedule your workshop so that uh, you can have a clear flow, okay? And then choose the right platform. Um, it helps, you know, you can even be in a person's house, but go an extra mile to put some nice curtains in the back or a wallpaper, put, do some decoration and all that because one little place is going to be viewed all over the world or all over the schools or all over the, all the counties that we have. We are looking to affect counties at the same time through online trainings, you know? It's not all the time that we'll get um, physical invitations. It's something we have to prepare for because the entire world uh, dynamics have shifted in the market, they have shifted. So we have to prepare ourselves on both sides, okay? Um, so figure out the activities. No, choose the right platform is number three. There are a lot of online platforms available for you to choose from. Uh, each comes with uh, the right set of features. You know, you can be 
somewhere, but then your features in the background look as if you're in Dubai somewhere or as if you're training by the beach. Okay, so learn all these online features that can help your background look very good, exciting and inviting. Okay, and then number four, start solid, start solid, start solid. Um, first impressions are really important. Okay, so you need to be confident, assertive and friendly to better relate to your attendees. Did you hear that? You need to be confident. It comes out in how you sound. You need to be confident, you need to be assertive, okay? And friendly to better relate to your attendees. And then number five, keep it interactive as much as possible. So guys, I'm just giving you uh, three minutes, discuss among yourselves. And then uh, because you can see the names online, okay, uh, Sarah, tell me something. Uh, after Sarah shared with us, I need Edna, I need Paminas, I need somebody. So everybody gets a minute in that order. You know, so everybody knows, oh, I'm going to be picked upon and they'll feel important at the same time they'll feel ready and they'll give you more attention because they don't want to switch off and be called upon when they're not online. It's, I, I, I was attending classes online and the lecturer calls on somebody and they're not there. Calls on the second person, they're not there, yet their names are showing as if they're there. So when you start off, by surprising people or letting them know that along the journey, I'm gonna be picking some names to tell us what you understand and then give you three minutes, discuss something, think about this, write it down and then I pick up on you. They stay glued. This is how to manage online platforms trainings, okay? So keep it interactive, uh, take pauses at the right time, ask questions and encourage, uh, encourage interactions with and among the audience. Then um, sprinkle some activities, all work, all, oh my goodness, I have six minutes. All work and no play will make the workshop boring. So plan out activities, okay? And then you can break the audience into groups and uh, give them some fun assignments to break the ice, okay? They can always regroup quietly online, uh, form little groups and then come back and now they know each other and then they make online presentations. Then take notes, take notes, you may, you may be the one delivering the workshop, but that doesn't mean you can't learn anything new. Even if you're delivering the workshop, always go there with a notepad, a pen or a gadget to note you. Uh, for all the classes, almost, let me say 95% of the classes I've attended online, I've recorded. My phones are full right now because I have been recording. I want to replay it and replay it and replay it. Uh, I want to digress a little bit and share something up about, um, there was a time I was doing a lot of plays. So I was teaching our uh, key stage six, nine year olds all the way to N, all level. And I was also doing a lot of acting and um, you're given a 200 page book and you're told uh, this you're going to deliver in the next three weeks. So in those three weeks, you don't have free time. You have your work at school, okay, to mark because I was teaching then. And I need to prepare this book because my name and the pictures are already running all over the place. I can't say I am not ready. So I, 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 I bought a little recorder, okay? And I could read the entire book into the recorder. I read it over and over. So I sleep with the recorder playing. By the time I wake up, it's still playing, you know, back and forth. So that under two, under one month or under three weeks, I discover, wow. I can actually deliver a 200 page book word for word under three weeks. You know, those are some of the things we use practical examples to encourage people. So take notes. I, I take notes all the time, whether it's a child speaking, whether it's a teacher speaking and when the, what did you say there? Just a minute, let me write down, let me write down. Participants online are watching you take notes. It encourages them as well to take notes. You don't have to say, you don't have to tell them, you know, take notes as well because they need it, okay? It's Miles Monroe that was saying that uh, he has never had to tell his kids to, to read any book because he himself reads about four books every month and the wife was reading about five books for about 20 years, every month, every month, the wife was reading five books and he was reading about four books. And so the kids picked up the culture. If we are trainers, have a book with you, take notes with you, be a reader, take notes again, you will infect others with your own habits because you want results, okay? And then uh, provide, sorry, and conclusively, 
end conclusively, end the workshop in such a way that you drive the message home. Your audience must understand your point, clear any doubts and answer all of their questions. Unless, and otherwise, if there's no time, then let them write down, but let them know that in your heart, there's room for all your questions, that you're there to hear, to alleviate their doubts, to alleviate their worries, let them know. Okay, then uh, provide some giveaways. I think I touched on this. Provide some giveaways. If you have bio pens, if you have, um, uh, you know, you went there with some Bibles or uh, uh, some reading material, do you have even certificate of participation? Nothing excites people than letting them know at the beginning that, you know, at the end of this workshop, we are going to have a, a certificate of participation. These are the things that really matter out there in the world. When you're searching for a job, you'll be able to present to people this and any potential employer will know that you meant business with investing your life in the right places. And, you know, little things like these are those that pull, especially students, from being idle from not pursuing the purpose of their lives when they engage their lives in meaningful things. They will now follow you up and ask you, what's the next thing you're doing? Do you have, when it, what is the next calendar reading? What is the next thing you guys are giving? Where is the next workshop you're providing? Please ensure that you engage us. We can't wait. So you see, they are the ones following you up because of those little, little giveaways. Little giveaways go a long way, okay? Provide giveaways. If you ensure the above points, you are on course for a solid performance. However, the success of workshop depends on these other factors, your subject, okay? Your subject, you need to master the subject, master and present them, present the subject in a way that your audience will absorb the information, okay? You can also ask the experts to, experts on them. You can also ask the experts on them if you are not one, if you are not one yourself. If you're not an, I'm not an expert in IT. So if an IT question comes, I'm going to ask anyone in the audience, okay, who's well versed in this area, help us in this area. There's nothing, it's not about you. It's about delivering results. So you never have to bring yourself in the journey. It's not about your ego. It's not about you feeling that, oh, I don't have that. I don't have understand. No, 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 include. There is an expert in the audience that can handle a certain session, okay? And on different subject matters. Then the more you know, the better, okay. Um, if you, if you, if you would, sorry, it would be quite embarrassing for you if you couldn't answer one of the questions thrown at you during question and answer. So, you even if you don't know the answer, have a way you can answer. Have a way you can answer. Even if you don't know the answer, have a way. There are ten thousand ways of how to go about any question that you don't know the answer about. Okay. And then uh, what else do, does, the, does the performance of the workshop depend upon? It heavily depends on the delivery, okay? All of your research will be wasted if you can't deliver them properly. You spend weeks researching, but if you don't master the art of how to deliver all of your research and time invested will go to waste, okay? Try speech techniques, okay? Try speech techniques and practice speaking in front of a mirror. It works magic. Record yourself again and again or bring someone in the room, a sister, a brother, a spouse, okay? Uh, let them tell you how you sound and then view the clip again until when you're happy about this delivery, okay? Then you can also write a script so you, you don't get lost during the workshop. However, having a script can be a double-edged sword. Your attendees will definitely notice if you, are, if you just practice reading off the script. Prepare yourself and look at the script only when necessary. Okay? Look at the script only when necessary. Then video conferencing tools. Video conferencing tools. We are talking about online workshops, okay? There are a lot of platforms available for online workshops. Household, household names like Zoom and Skype are used by the majority of hosts. What other platforms are there, by the way? You can type them in the, in the other section, the other platforms that people are using right now. Google Meetup, what other platforms are there? Keep people well versed and start uh, acquainting yourselves on how to run workshops online on the different um, on the different platforms as well. Then, um, unfortunately, this present this present present a little to no versatility in terms of the activities that you can let your participants do. At the same time, hosting a huge 
workshop can result in a lag, okay? I prefer uh, using Google Meetup, that's very common. Zoom is common, uh, but anything that will help people be more interactive, that's that should be more preferred than any other. Which platform encourages more interaction, okay? Um, as key features. Then uh, the last one, leave enough instructions online and leave people refer to links, okay? It's, it's virtually impossible to do enough research and not leave links for people to read further. If you did a good job in your delivery, people are left hungry and they're asking you more information. So you'll send out the notes or you'll refer them to a certain link. Right now, since we don't have, um, you know, standing in front of a class is not a lecturer who leave down notes for you to go photocopy down the shop there. No, prepare early enough so that immediately the lectures are done. You leave links, you refer people to those links and they're able to be acquainted with more of uh, what it is you are meant to deliver. So it's in another forum that God willing, okay, that uh, we'll be able to do more on exposition and uh, what else was uh, Julie wanting me to do here? Um, someone's delivery, the head, the middle, the conclusion, all the exposition, everything and uh, hermeneutics, everything that it takes to prepare as someone will get there. So who are you first of all, the quality of who you are as a trainer, then uh, the mechanics of how the hall is and around there and how to prepare, and then the material itself and how to deliver. Anything else? I started off by saying for you to run a successful workshop, be the kind of person that you also want to go watch. When you're told you are the one running the training, be the kind of person that you're curious to go run, to go see. And when you start becoming that person, anybody else will be excited when they hear, oh, it's this lady, it's this guy here um, running this workshop. Everybody is running to go see you because you are already that person. Questions, answers, it's four minutes past 10. Uh, thank you very much, Coach. Uh, yes, uh, I think we can just take two questions because of time. Then uh, if there'll be further forthcoming uh, questions, you can just write them on the chat board. Coach and uh, attach them on the notes. Yeah. So, any questions? You can just raise up your hand quickly. Okay, myself, I have a question. Let me begin with myself. Maybe okay. Anyone else? Um, you had mentioned about three types of audiences, and you just mentioned one the visual people so uh what are the other two types of audiences coach oh thanks for that the visual and then we have the auditory people that only remember more based on your level of explanation it's what they hear that they remember not so much what they see but what they hear that's another type of audience okay anytime you go into a class remember there are three kinds of audience we have the visual audience we have the auditory a a u DI, auditory audience. And then we have the kinesthetic. Uh, these are people that remember more from how they feel about the information, okay? They remember, they record things based on feelings. So you could be talking, but all they're doing is they're looking down. They look like they're not even with you, like they're not participating. So they are not visual, nothing visual moves them, okay? And it's not so much how you're saying or what you're saying, but how what you're saying is making them feel, that's how they're registering and recording information in different parts of the body, depending on how it's making them feel. So they will remember it. And so your duty, your duty as a trainer is to deliver in mind with those visual, Make sure you have visual presentations, whether it's uh, you know some 
clips people will watch or you'll dramatize something for the visual audience and your speech and presentation techniques and your skills of talking and communication has got to be really really good for the sake of auditory type of uh, audience type of um of listeners or audience that you have there and then find words that will help the kinesthetic kinesthetic type of audience to remember more those are feeling words feeling words so you know if you're asking a visual visual person uh, a question you can ask them uh what did you see what, what did you see because they are having pictures in their minds what did you see that is the same same question to an auditory person that you ask um what did you hear but then to a, a, a kinesthetic audience, you want to ask them what they feel about something. This thing made me feel this way. How, how did that make you feel? But then also in your explanation, you put a lot of feeling words. You'll find the adjectives that touch more on feelings. That was hurtful. Oh, that was exciting. They're feeling it, you know? And that is how they will remember what it is that you said. So in any audience, there, there are three kinds of people. We have the visual audience, we have the auditory audience, and we have the kinesthetic type of audience. Thanks for that question. Thank you, Coach. Uh, anyone else with a question, kindly? Vanessa, to absorb seeing your question, I'll, I'll talk about that. So. Anyone else who has a question? Okay, can you feel friends? My homework for being a, a good, you know, it can't end here. This is just the beginning to spark an excitement on, on the journey of trainers. But my homework to all of you will be when you're when you're reading anything Jesus said, the, the words that Jesus said, mark them. Did he use, you know, where he used metaphors, where he used parables, where he used questions, where he used similes to compare something, where he used a story that is the most powerful way of teaching because what jesus began is still here with us so find that out as an individual and begin to practice and you find you're creating your own comfortable way of becoming your own type of trainer to deliver your own unique set of results that will be very consistent in any workshop that you run results will follow you because you followed up with further homework in learning and practicing after the master coach the master trainer who is who jesus see how he only had 12 disciples for only three years but what he left is a bushfire still spreading until today the questions the listening everything he said there's just a masterful skill way that's why he was called rabbi a teacher there's a way he taught there's a way he delivered his content that left people on the road to a mouse with their hearts burning didn't our hearts burn as he spoke to us by the time they're asking that he's already disappeared so you've left the workshop you've disappeared but you've left the hearts of the audience burning because of how it is that you said certain things and who it is that was saying those things thanks a lot francis i'm seeing your hand is up kindly unmute and uh Proceed. Okay, thank you, Coach Lillian, for that session. There's something that you mentioned about uh, grooming and how it has an impact. To, uh, it has an impact to the audience. So my question is: Is there or are there specific colors that one should uh, should have in your attire so that it doesn't like um, any affect the, the audience, especially for men? Thank you. <laughs> the common neutral one is just black and white. Um, a, a lot of people I've seen have very good sense of uh, combination and color. Uh, we still have a few that have a journey, you know, the, from the socks, the belt and the shirt and the tie and uh, so, but then if you have a group of friends that you're helping out on each other, it will um it will help balance out but the most neutral one when you're not sure what to wear put on black put on black and white put on plain white put on gray put on blue um i love gray blue blacks whites those are normal 
Okay. If you're going to a place where you've been called because the discipline issues are rampant, you want to avoid the red and the yellows. Okay. Uh, dark green is fine. I find brown gloomy. It, it, someone feels bored and dull and they can't even figure out why. Oh, because there's brown in front of me. They can't even figure out why, but this is color psychology in terms of training. It's another ball game altogether. So thank you, Coach. Um, I just have a few comments. Um, I'd given this room for two questions. So Faminas, I can see you also have a question, but uh, because of time, kindly, allow us to share the same with Coach so that you can attach uh, with the notes when you're sharing the same. So um, my first announcement, uh, rather, is that uh, we promise we're going to share the notes via our emails, and that is why we are being requested to uh, proceed with the registration. Yeah, there's a link that is being pro provided and attached to every meeting. So we register so that the emails that will be received will also receive the notes. So kindly let us register. And uh, number two, I can confirm uh, that. Uh, for full course attendance and participation in this training, we are going to receive certificates. So coach, I can confirm that we are actually practicing what you're telling us. Yeah, so there'll be certificates. Thank you, Alda Kosge, for sharing the link with us. Yeah. Um, thirdly, um, Vanessa, uh, your, your question about the Fly M groups. Well, we have Fly M groups that are already uh, running for the same so we cannot have other groups uh, uh, for the same so we have the BR group which is for those who are in uh, campus we have the JR group which is for those who are in high school and those who recently uh, cleared from form four we have the alumni group and we also have the LAMS ministry for those who are coordinating those in primary school so if you fall in either of those categories and you are not in any of the flying groups, so kindly feel free yeah, to share your name and your contact and your details with Joy Manje or Kate Buddha, who are our flying secretaries. So yeah, that is it. I think we can just uh, yeah, call it uh, an end and just thank you so much actually for Coach for being here. I am so excited. I, you know. <laughs> I'm a victim of so many things, but with an open heart, I am willing to correct, rectify, and uh, move forward. Yeah, to deliver messages effectively from now henceforth. So, thank you so much, everyone, for coming forward thank and being with us. And Julian, perhaps you have any comments? Elda Kosge, any comments? None from me. I'm just very happy for the session tonight. Um, I've taken very many notes and I know we will, you will be back, uh, coach, you will be back to train us even on a more professional level as the Lord helps us and as we grow as a ministry. So thank you for your time and the sacrifice of everything that you're doing towards the and, and advancement of the kingdom of God. God bless you so much. Um, I don't have much to say. I'm just so grateful to Coach for that session. You've really unpacked a lot within the short period, and I'm still uh, trying to digest. I'm a bit slow, but um, but sure. So thank you very much uh, for that. I mean, it's um, the information we are getting is. I, I want to imagine that how much people would pay for this, but for you, you've decided to uh, give us, I can't say for free, but like um, to invest in us. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much. Um, I'm trying to decipher the Fly M uh, email accounts. Uh, those who have uh, queries, for example, can see Nicholas uh, has an issue concerning the R. So, yeah, I think Fosha can help me with that. You can just share with them and post the Fly M uh, account address. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. We could share the words of the grace together as we wrap up our meeting. Sorry, I can see Nicholas has a concern. Have you addressed that? Sorry, uh, is it something we can deal with separately? Maybe you can direct Nicholas to get in touch with you uh, a bit later. the notes and the and the answers to the questions that will be shared from yeah and yeah thank you Porsche also for sharing the, the the phone number yeah you can use either platform so let us kindly unmute and share the words of the grace together the Holy Spirit be with us now Amen. 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 Amen.